Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about first order circuits. So I'm going to talk about source free RC and RL circuits that are first order circuits. And then in the next video, I'm going to move on with um, the circuits, the first order circuits that have um, independent sources. Okay. So what I'm saying is that first of all, first order circuits, how do I know that I have a first order circuit? is actually characterized by a first order differential equation so if i have a circuit that is characterized by a first order differential equation it means that i have a first order circuit first order circuits we have two of them available we have either rc or rl so c and l are the elements that will cause that differential equation then um, for each RC and RL, RL circuit, we will have two different ways to excite the circuit. One of them is initial conditions and the other one is independent sources. So initial conditions. And independent sources. So as I said, the independent sources will be left for next video. Today I'm going to talk about uh, the excitation by initial conditions. By initial conditions, it means that I have a source-free circuit. So here you can see a source-free RC circuit. In this RC circuit, I'm going to have I of the resistor over here and I of the capacitor over here. So if I write a KCL, IC plus IR is equal to zero. And if I expand that, IC is equal to C dV over dt plus V over R, which is equal to IR, is equal to zero. And we know that V of zero, V at time zero, is equal to V zero. So I have the initial condition. So this circuit is actually called a source-free RC circuit. Okay. All right. Now, see, I have first order differential equation. This means that my circuit is first order circuit. Now, I'm going to just um, rearrange this equation. So, C dV over dt is equal to negative V over R. And then from here, I can say that dV over dt is equal to negative 1 over RC multiplied by V. Then if I take dt to the other side and bring v to the left side, I'm going to be left with dv over v is equal to negative 1 over rc dt. If I take the integral of both sides, on the left side, I'm going to, left with, I'm going to be left with ln of v. That is equal to negative 1 over rc multiplied by t plus some constant i'm going to write it as ln of a this is the integration constant okay so it's just a constant now if i take the power the exponential power um, for each side what i'm going to be left with is v will be equal to a e to the negative one over rc multiplied by t. But what is a? I know that v at time zero is equal to v zero. So from here, I can say that a is clearly equal to v zero. So my v, the voltage, is equal to v zero e to the negative t over rc. Okay? So we call this a natural response because the um, this voltage response that we have for this RC, it just it's just um, actually created because of the initial conditions. So since this is the response without any external applied voltage or current, this response is called the natural response. Response, okay? Then tau is time constant. So if I want to know the time constant of this circuit tau which is the time constant is equal to r 
C. So technically, V, the natural response of this circuit, is V0 E to the negative T over tau. And tau is the time constant. Okay? Now, let's, um, now let's talk about another source-free um, circuit. So another source-free circuit that we can have is RL. Okay, so I can have source free RL. It means that instead of the C that I have in the previous circuit, this time I'm going to have L. So this is some L. This is the R. Right here. So here I'm going to have my VL. This is L, positive, negative, VR. <coughs> this is R. And we're going to have some I passing through the circuit. Now, there is also an initial condition here as I of 0 is equal to I0. Okay? So if I write the KVL in this circuit, I'm going to be left with VR plus VL is equal to 0. Instead of VR, I can write RI. And instead of VL, I can write L DI over DT. That is equal to zero. So if I rearrange the circuit, this um, equation, I'm going to be left with L DI over DT is equal to negative RI. And then I divide both sides by an L. So DI over DT is equal to negative R over L I. Now I'm gonna just rearrange it as I did for the RC. So DI over I <coughs> is equal to negative R over L multiplied by DT. Now I'm gonna again take the integral of both sides and we're gonna get the exact same results but this time is for the current passing through this inductor. So from here, as we did before, I of T will be equal to I0, which is the initial condition, E to the negative R over L multiplied by T. So now the time constant in the RL circuit, tau, is equal to L over Okay. All right. So, um, if I want to actually write the this equation with tau, that would be I zero e to the negative r over l is actually one over tau. So minus t over tau. Okay. All right. So I don't want this video to get super long, so I'm going to stop here, and then in the next video, I'm going to talk about the excitation of these first order circuits using the um, independent sources, so there will be some <coughs> um, external voltage and current applied to the um, circuit. All right, so I hope you understood the first order circuits. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.